when you get to the place where you feel emotionally safe to open up to him, mentally safe to give your points of view, have conversation with him, now that's the best time to start getting undressed. You see, that's another level of vulnerability. If you get undressed too soon, then what happens is he has sex with you. Always after sex, men's testosterone levels go down. And if he doesn't have a full bonding with you in the heart and in the mind, what happens is he doesn't have any connection with you. It's like he pulls away and a part of it, he's disgusted by you. Now, they don't always admit this. They talk about guys, you know, suddenly your toes look too big. Or, you know, it's like you're, he notices what's wrong with you because you had sex too soon. Now, I saw a cartoon that once said, is it really true that if you have too, sex too soon that the, the light, a man won't like you? And the answer is, well, he won't like you as much, but he'll like himself more. <laughs> so he wants to like you more than he likes himself more because if he, he he gets to do something that makes you feel good. So here's another one. Men are for their ego, which in our society erroneously says everybody's having sex. People are having much less sex than ever before. But he feels for his ego as a man, I should be able to get a woman to have sex with me. So that's a big, big ego thing. And not a bad thing. It's because men have always, you know, if you're an alpha man, you, women want to have sex with you. That's just the reality of, of history. And, you know, when the soldiers came back from war and World War II, women all wanted to have sex with them. You know, they're kissing them and hugging them and going to bed with them. Because why? Because here's a man protecting me. I feel safe in his presence. Estrogen levels go up and she's now in the mood to have sex. So if you're having sex just to make sure you keep him or just to please him or just because you're addicted to clitoral stimulation, he's your vibrator, that's the wrong time. It should be because you feel really safe with him. Your heart is open. He's been pursuing you. And a part of you really wants to have sex with him because you want to have sex with him. And it's not just that addiction. Because once you start using clitoral stimulation, which by the way, clitoral stimulation produces testosterone, male hormones, and vaginal stimulation, breast stimulation, kissing all stimulates estrogen. So you only want to get to the clitoris after you've got a lot of estrogen and, and testosterone starting to come up and then get right into the vagina. Uh, you don't want to just be always dependent, sometimes for fun, you, you do what you want to do in sex, but really the clitoris is dangerous. First of all, if there's no clitoral stimulation, uh, often then women don't want to have sex, they're just accommodating their partner. What happens biologically for a woman as her estrogen levels naturally rise due to estrogen stimulation, where you feel someone is there for you, they're caring for you, you're important to them, and that's why monogamy is so, so important. You're number one. Okay, that that has to be there. My mind. Now you've been. You're that's going to bring your estrogen to higher levels. Rather than you know the woman on her male side, she's producing male hormones, which says you know I want to have sex. Okay, that's your male side wanting sex, and usually it's very clitoral stimulation, as opposed to if you look at the natural uh, estrogen procedure of being able to make a baby, which is what sex is all about. Your estrogen level goes really high. And then around a day or two before ovulation, just biologically, what will happen is your body releases a hormone in the brain, a uh, luteinizing hormone, and then it goes down to your, your uh, adrenal gland and produces testosterone. And testosterone makes you want to have sex like a man wants to have sex. So you need to have estrogen levels go high, then you want to have sex because you've got all this feminine energy that says, I want to be penetrated. Okay, so that's one dynamic. Another one is women just on their male side who just want this clitoral stimulation. Okay, that's addictive. That's because you're making testosterone and just testosterone without the estrogen. So that that's a problem with it, even though it feels good. You know, eating ice cream for me feels good, but it's not good for me to do that often. Just because things feel good doesn't mean it's good for your health, your well-being, and certainly not for your hormonal imbalance. This morning I did an hour of exercise and it doesn't feel good. Uh, it's hard. I'm fasting now for three days. I'd rather eat, okay? But I do this once a month so my testosterone stays high. I don't have the same energy level I would have. So exercise was like, gee, I don't want to do this. And I stopped in the middle and said, well, let me rest for a little while and then I'll come back to it. But it was hard. It was difficult. It was overcoming a challenge and that makes a man's testosterone surge. Makes me feel great because I am uh, masculine. Those, those are the male hormones. But I have a woman I care about that raises my estrogen. So if you look at the, the men on averages, now I'm not the average because I have this knowledge, but on average, 
Every year, a man's testosterone level goes down 1%. This is our culture we live in. And particularly with the uh, with with all of the plastics and the pesticides and the GMOs, these are all mm -hmm. called hormone disruptors. It makes women more masculine. It makes men more feminine. It lowers his testosterone and contributes to a woman's estrogen going too low. So those are factors that you can't do a whole lot about. Okay, you can do something about it, but you can't do a whole lot about it. You can also cleanse, like I do, detoxify these poisons in the body. That's a good thing. But most important, most important is sex. Okay, so uh, and all the things I'm talking about, male Mars Venus sex. When you get to that place where your body really wants to be penetrated, that's when you have sex with a man. Before that, you can kiss, you can touch, first base, second base. But you've got to stop it. Now, if you stop it, a man could reject you. You know, he feels vulnerable and he feels rejected. He's already on his female side, so he's going to feel rejected. So you got to be real careful with his ego at that time. He still could be a great partner, but you have to know the, there's realities you have to deal with here. And sex is the only time where a man is fully vulnerable is when he has an erection. Okay, this is he has no ability to defend himself. Any negative message you give him at that time is tough for him. And you get a reactivity of where he will withdraw and, and pout and that all. He's, he's, he's going to his female side when he's aroused. Okay, so he's going to be like a girl who gets her feelings hurt easily. And that's the only time when he's on his female side that he can be, have his feelings hurt. So he's aroused, he's turned on, and you're enjoying that, he's enjoying that. You should have no goal other than wait. <laughs> How do you stop it without offending him and hurting him, hurting his feelings? Okay. You just simply say, I like to go slow. This feels so good and I don't want to go any further because I'll go out of control. Well, good, go out of control. No, I've learned from history. I need to go slow. I'm more traditional. I just need to go slow. Well, why? Why? One answer is enough. I just need to go slow. And then I know I'm going to love it. And already I know my body's going to love it, but I need to take some time and then I'll really, really love it. So you've just left, let him off the hook. Because you can say, oh, yes, I want to have sex with you too, but I have to go slow because my tendency is to get too needy. You, if you want to go more details, after I have sex, I get a little needy. I don't want that. I just, I'll let you know the right time. I'll let you know. So that's another key thing, even for married couples. You know, I say to my wife, do you want to have sex? And she says, not really. I've got this to do, this to do, this to do. That's a terrible message, but he can, you can say, do you want to have sex? He says, I always want to have sex with you. It's just, I have to do these other things. I'll let you know when I'm ready. Now you can get ready. You have this anticipation. I'll let you know. He's going to be fine with that as long as he knows you want to have sex. Okay. Just tell him, I always want to have sex with you, John. I just need to, you know, do all these things first and, and I'll let you know when. And that could be next week. He could say again, is, it, is this the time? No, I'll, I'll let you know. I'm, we're, I'm getting there. You need to get positive messages that, he won't interpret as rejection. And so what would happen? I didn't know that one skill. So I'd write a book for a month. I could write a book in a month, but it's like 18 hours a day. I'm in front of the computer. She's neglected for a month up in that house. How's she going to have any estrogen? You know, it's going to take her time. So I come up and I've just saved the world. You know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm coming into a, a, a huge arena and everybody's cheering for me. You know, that last five pages, I'm in ecstasy. You know, I did this whole thing. It's going to be over now and I'm done. So I'm feeling my testosterone is so high and she's neglected all this time. Her estrogen is so low and I want to go have sex with her. And, and I, well, when, when do you want to have sex? She says, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just need more romance. Okay. I, I, one time she, she said, we need to get reacquainted. I mean, what do you mean? I'm your husband. Okay. So all that aside, <laughs> solve the problem. When I said, do you want to have sex? When I have sex, she says, John, I always want to have sex with you. I just need a little more estrogen to enjoy it. See, this is this such great knowledge, understanding. I need more of my female hormones to to fully enjoy it. I'll let you know. But that last part of it, I'll let you know, uh, would make me angry, okay? Because I'm sitting here waiting, not knowing, is it time? Is it time? It's humiliating for a man. So many men, when they're married to women, trying to convince them to have sex. You know, to have your partner want to have sex with you is the greatest gift and you can put it off if you just say, oh, part of me really wants to have sex with you, but I need to go slow. I need to go slow. Now he's off the hook. Yeah, she wants to have sex with me. I'm the, quite the guy. So these are encouraging messages whenever possible. Another thing, if he does something that upsets you and you're upset, you can't always control that. You can simply say, 
look, it's not a big deal, but it, I pushed a button inside of me and it's not about you. And if you understand psychology, I'm not going to do the whole thing about basic psychology. I do have a book called What You Feel You Can Heal, which is kind of like basic psychology and from a more enlightened perspective. <laughs> it's not also enlightened, the psychology, because it doesn't understand gender differences. Any coach, any therapist you go to, please be warned. If they don't understand the differences between men and women, they're going to give you information that may work if you're with another woman, but not with a man. See, mm -hmm. we species we it's literally biologically what makes us happy is different hormones than what makes a woman happy so you went in so when it comes to sex here's some more information people just don't have they did a study with 25 year old boys young men and they measured their testosterone levels uh when they on the day when they're going to have sex with their with their partner and then uh on tuesday say say they did a saturday night then on tuesday they have sex again after each time having sex they go it goes up while they're having sex then it goes down to their baseline now what we know about all men is every year their baseline goes down but baseline you have sex go back to your baseline then on tuesday you have sex goes back to your baseline then on saturday you wake up you're at your baseline now if you have sex on saturday night and you don't have sex on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You abstain for six days from ejaculating. There is such a thing as making out and kissing and loving each other without ejaculating that you can do to get this benefit. Because if you go for six days after ejaculation, on the seventh day, your testosterone levels go up 50%. Mm. Like, then every time his testosterone goes, goes up anticipating you, he bonds with you. When his testosterone goes up and nothing happens inside of you, it goes the other direction. So what you want is not, this is all some science to help you understand why you don't want to go on a weekend with him and have sex six times. Because if you don't have a, a stable relationship where he's bonded in his heart, bonded in his mind, means he likes the way you think. He likes having conversation with you. He likes listening to you. He may not talk that much, but he likes having interaction with you. And also emotionally, he does little things and gets rewarded for it. So he feels I've got a job that's high paying. I didn't have to work that hard and I, I get paid so much. Okay. He's got that as a bond because when he has sex, when he's turned on, he's bonding with you in that moment. But afterwards, biologically, it goes back to the basics, goes right down the baseline. And if he doesn't, if he's not connected with you in his heart or in his mind, he's completely disconnected from you. And it feels like yuck. You know, after a while, it just doesn't feel good. In the beginning, it's, it, you know, sex is massive dopamine stimulator because it's new. New. And well, and also, if the sex happens too early in a dating relationship, and, you know, everyone has their definition of what that might be. You, you talked about being able to share your mind, being able to share your heart, your emotions. But men have told me that it makes it more difficult for them sometimes to really bond with a woman in these other ways because then it becomes all about the sex. It becomes all about the physical and they may not connect with her in the same way as they might have otherwise had they connected with her men mentally and emotionally or listened to her or gone into her in that way before the sex happened. And I... And I sometimes call these little things like heart glimpses, like you want to give him a glimpse into your heart. Like the, I loved what you shared about sharing something like, oh, I put my foot in my mouth or I was so embarrassed. That's showing vulnerability. That's also showing heart glimpse in a way. It's kind of asking for support or help. Like, you know, oh, it's OK. We all do those kind of things from time to time. That kind of thing. It's just revealing this is what turns men on. They bond with you. But if it's just sexual afterwards, his testosterone just went down. You know, it's interesting if, if I do something for have a good conversation with her, my testosterone doesn't go down afterwards. If I do something nice for her and she appreciates it, my testosterone doesn't go down. So, but when you have sex and you're a man and you ejaculate, you're done. You're done for several days. And also what happens is when you have sex without bonding first, okay, you're getting to know the person, whatever. If a man has sex, we'll take the extreme. If he has sex with a one night stand, what happens in a one night stand is different hormones get produced. Then you have, if you bonded with a woman, you care for her, she's important to you, you enjoy her, all about her. 
and you have sex with her, after you ejaculate, something happens in your body. Your body produces a hormone called prolactin. Prolactin is actually a venous hormone, but it's a, a prolactin suppresses his sexual desire. If he does it, if he has sex without prolactin, then after having sex, he wants sex again with a new partner. He wants sex again with a new partner. It's literally like, well, if she didn't love you, because when he bonds with you, she's now bonding with him. Okay, you can't fully bond in your heart unless, and when you bond with a man mentally and emotionally, it affects him biologically. Whereas if you just have sex with him, he doesn't make prolactin. Prolactin causes him to lose interest in having sex. That means he doesn't have sex with anybody else, but if he's making enough testosterone, he will want sex with you. Now that's the problem with prolactin. You see couples who love each other a lot, they stop having sex because he's got so much prolactin inside of him from making love, ejaculating with someone who loves him. So you, you gave your energy to her, but she gave her energy to you. You love each other, it's a whole experience. And now you have prolactin, which will suppress your sexual desire. Now what creates, how it does that is prolactin suppresses dopamine. See, the newness of a relationship, you automatically get dopamine. Now, what's the benefit of dopamine in the, ben in the beginning of a relationship? It raises testosterone in men. It raises estrogen in women. If you have bonding, then your body makes prolactin. Your prolactin levels keep you from being addicted to sex. So you no longer have addiction to sex. But why do you want to keep having sex with your partner? Well, and that's inevitable because after a while, when you make love to your partner, it's your partner and you're committed, and you're going to make prolactin. Also, you're going to have a lot of serotonin, which is ease and comfort. You know, you don't have to go searching for another woman. So there's no new and different as familiarity sets in. So couples stop having sex. Now, what can keep the passion, unquenchable passion, this is like for me, it doesn't go away. All she has to do is be in bed with me and I'm ready to go. Where does that come from? Because there's polarity two ways to raise testosterone and estrogen in a woman. One way is just have new different experiences, which is why, you know, for sex therapists, there's a limit to their help, but they can be helpful. They'll say, go to a hotel, go do something, go on a vacation, go somewhere new and different. That newness, it's a good, good thing to do, will raise your dopamine. If suddenly your husband who never helps with housework and starts vacuuming, uh, it will raise, it's new and different, but it will go away after a while. Yeah, that'll okay. turn a woman on. <laughs> but yes, it will turn. But once it becomes familiar, it's not going to do much. Okay. It, there's, a, there's a spike in dopamine whenever your partner goes beyond your expectation, does something new and different. That's okay. These are all good things to do. But what really keeps it going, which is without dopamine, without depending on dopamine to feel masculine and for women to feel feminine, you have polarity and polarity is where she is more feminine and he is more masculine. He's making a lot more male hormones than she is and she's making a lot more female hormones than he's got. That's what creates the attraction. Even mentally, always agreeing with your partner will be boring. Having a different point of view. You know, often people say, oh, we have to have harmony. You can have harmony and have different points of view. An idea that's foreign to our culture today <laughs> with all the cancel culture, you know, if you can't think that what I think, then I'm going to disconnect as opposed to having differences and working, blending those together. It's like, I don't need everything to be in agreement with me. And that's really, really important. We have to recognize what keeps relationships from thriving is our judgments. You know, we get critical, we get judgmental. We think you should change. You're not good enough. You shouldn't think that way. We would have less of that tendency to try to change our partner if our hormones were more in balance. Okay, that means we have a sense of inner happiness, inner strength, and we don't have this neediness, which says it's not enough, it's not enough. Now, at the same time, there's a healthy version of not enough for women. The healthy version of women, when they're not enough, is ask for help. I'm not getting enough help. Okay, now there's a place when women don't feel that I have the help of a man, a partner who's committed to me, a partner who's there for me. When they, when they don't have that in their life, what happens is their estrogen goes down, their testosterone goes up, and they disconnect with feeling I need help. Okay, I can do it myself. I do it myself mm -hmm. and I create a situation in my life where I have to do it myself. It's like you get caught into your own imbalance where you now to keep it going, you have to do it. And even though I don't want to do it, I'd rather have somebody do it for me. I'd rather relax, I have them do it for me sometimes, not all the time. I'm not saying just being weak and needy all the time and depending on men. 
it, it causes depression in women. And, and just as when men are not feeling needed, it causes depression in men. Any depressed man has low testosterone. If he's needed and can fulfill the goal, then his testosterone goes up and he feels alive. So it's always giving messages to men how they can be successful and applying themselves to provide little things for you and then more for you and then more for you and then and then marriage or commitment, commitment first before you have sex. Then you get towards marriage and then and long before you get married, just keep in mind your best negotiating power to set the boundaries in the relationship is before you get married. It's kind of unfair to have a guy who's like addicted to porn. He thinks it's all normal. Everybody's doing it. So what's the problem with it? And then you get married and now you sealed the deal. And then you say, but you know, one red flag for me is porn. I know it's fun. I know it's enjoyable. I know it's natural. You see a naked woman, you get turned on. I like to be that naked woman. And as long as you have that, it's more addictive. And I, I feel disconnected from you. And there's nothing wrong with it. You're not bad for it. It's just for me to grow in love for you. I know that if you're doing porn, your energy's going there. It's not coming to me. You have to do it in a nice way, but you set the boundary and you try to set that boundary before marriage. If you are married, some women listening are married. So you got to you, you say this to your husband. You say, you know, I, I discovered that, you know, when I know you're doing porn and there's nothing wrong with it and it's natural for men to be turned on to women, but there's an insecurity inside of me that that I know will keep me from growing in love for you. And I want to grow in love for you. I want to be that person for you. And you know, this was, I, I learned all that because my wife did that to me. It wasn't porn. It was, you know, suddenly I, this is long before I wrote the book, Men Are From Mars, but I would teach seminars in other cities and, and I was in one city and some woman got her, got into my room wearing all these sexy clothes and wanted to have sex with me. And I had to say no. So I did say no, uh, but she was like, wanted to talk for an hour on all the reasons why I should just do it. <laughs> it was a long conversation. But, and I was totally turned on. I mean, I'm a guy, a woman wants to have sex with me. My gosh, it just said, I mean, I'm a young guy. Okay, now no interest in that, but the I'm interested in my partner only. It's just natural because that's so much, so much of this prolactin hormone that says I'm not interested in sex at all, except with her, because with her, I have this polarity because she's way more feminine than me. You know, not any woman can trust me in reality the way my partner does. She knows me, she sees, gosh, this is amazing a man who can hear my feelings, a man who is open to doing little things for me. He doesn't take me for granted. When you're in a relationship, you're going on dates. He's doing things for you. And you're letting him know what you like to do. You're not being immature thinking he should know everything you like to do. You know, don't expect that of a man. That's just unrealistic. Yes, if he just suddenly is a mind reader and does it, yes, you'll feel like a little teenage girl and oh my God, this is a celebrity. Yeah, no, the reality is he doesn't know. You let him know. Here's a few things. This is things I know you want to know what I like to do. So here's three things I like to do and keep changing it up. What else do you want to do this weekend? These are things I'd like to do. Most women don't do this. This is, but it works. Okay. It's just now he knows and now he can pick and then he can take credit for it. You know, if my wife says, let's go to this movie tonight. And I say, okay. And then after the movie, we're talking about how great the movie is. And she tells her friend and the friend says, well, how'd you pick that movie? I picked it. Well, he's going to feel like a loser and she's going to feel like I'm in charge of everything, which she doesn't want to feel. She wants to feel we're a partnership. So she makes it, this is women's wisdom. She makes it so I can take credit for it. And you know how women are. If a man takes credit for something, a woman takes credit for, I have a man that did that for me. You know, right. if, if flowers show up in the office it, you know, on Valentine's Day and, and <laughs> her, she puts a feather in her hat because her husband did that for her. He'll put a feather in his hat because he did that for her. But if she had to order the flowers and send them to him, it's a different hormonal reaction. We just have to realize this is this is what romance is about. This is what unquenchable desire is about and passion. It's, it's simply always getting excited. Now, you know, in the beginning, you touch fingers. There's electricity, all right, because this is all imagination. What's going to happen now? Life, life's going to get better. Reality sets in. Maybe you touch fingers. It doesn't excite you so much. But when you get into the bed and you start loving each other and touching each other, that excitement comes back and even more if you know the dynamics of becoming more feminine in the bed and he becomes more masculine in the bed. And the masculine is to reassure a woman that she is loved. Everything I've talked about is men giving reassurance that women, they're not alone, that she has a man who stands by her 
and is prioritizing her over everything. So that's masculinity. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. And she is going to her feminine side, which is I don't have to do anything. See, when women talk about empowerment, I know the whole thing is empowered women, look what I can do and I can get to the glass ceiling and I can be just like a man and I need to be better than a man. <laughs> okay, so, and, and then complain that I'm better than men and I get paid less, whatever you want to complain about. Okay, So I'm on my male side. Uh, that's male empowerment. Okay, So you're a really great man. Female empowerment, if you look at the extremes of the power of femininity, is the power to attract support, the power to have other people do things for you, the power that draws in support for you. A man who wants to, he kneels before you to propose, would you marry me? That's the man you want. And so you want, if you want to go back to that man who did that, you have to go back to being the person you were at that time. And who were you at that time? Well, you were insecure. You wanted to know, do you like me? Do you love me? Am I beautiful? Do you want to be with me? Will you be monogamous with me? Are you committed to me? Are you sure? Are you happy to be with me? Do you think you want to marry me? All those insecurities are there. If you want to feel what you felt in the beginning, that's the biggest estrogen stimulator is be honest to yourself. You're insecure. I can be honest to myself. I'm insecure. That's why I don't walk around feeling insecure. But the reality is when I say a standing ovation is a different experience for me than a, people just clapping, good job. You know, that feels good, no problem. But why does more make me so excited? Because a part of me is always doubting, am I enough? Always doubting, am I enough? Whether I'm conscious of it or not, the motivation, I'm combing my hair, putting on this shirt, putting on this, 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 inter this interview, am I good enough? I want to be good enough because a part of me is afraid. This is subconscious. If I do something wrong, I will disappoint others. I don't want to disappoint others, right? So we're motivated. Well, for women, it's not, am I enough? For women, it's, do I deserve? Okay, this is like, yeah. I remember in the 90s, because I'm a man, I don't relate to it, but all these commercials would say to women, and you deserve it, <laughs> and you deserve it. I go, of course I deserve it, you know, but a man is always looking, am I good enough? You know, I can, you watch movies of, of TV shows on all these multimillionaires and immediately feel small in size until I realize that, wait a second, I in my own life, I'm great. They have their life. They have their different journey. There's this focus on money. Mine's focused on love. That's my values. So I have to sort of build myself back up in the presence. You know, it's that's what men are all about is, am I good enough? Am I, do I make a difference? This is what's hidden lurking in, in between. That's why everything I've said today, how to respond to a man, because how you respond to a man with positive feelings are revealing things that you don't normally share. And I have to qualify that. In the beginning, do not reveal things to him. Judgments or criticisms are trying to change him. That's not it. And never try to change a man. Just ask for help. <laughs> That's the key. You're not trying to change him, just letting him know this would make me happy. So the dynamic here is inside of a woman, I'm taking a big circle so that women may be, may be able to find this part of them, which is insecure which needs reassurance. Why do you need reassurance that you're beautiful, that you're loved, that you're not alone, that I'm there for you, I'm the guy, I'm happy with you, I'm not angry with you. If I was angry, I'm not angry now. I'm always so grateful to be with you. You're the one for me. I'm so happy I married you. You know, I'm glad to do things. Today I was working really hard and I wanted to work harder because I know it'll make us more money and then we can go on that great vacation, whatever it is. See, these are things that men need to say and it will have no effect it will have less effect on a woman unless she's aware of the part of her that needs to hear that. And she needs to hear it every day of her life in some way or another. I give her hugs, four hugs a day. That's reassuring her she's in my life. Bonnie used to tell me, John, I need reassurance. I had no idea what that meant. I married you. I support you. What do you need reassurance for? Until she reveals to me, you know, part of me feels insecure. So when I had that woman wanting to come on to me, I came home. I said, honey, you know, sex for a guy can be meaningless. I mean, it's just fun to do. This woman wanted to have sex with me. I got turned on. I mean, I completely love you, but I'm a guy. So, it, you know, I, I, so I wonder, is it okay if like I'm away, I'm never going to see the person again. I can have sex with them. Is that going to be a problem? Can, can you give me permission? She said, John, I don't want to tell you what to do. All I can say is if I thought that you were having sex with another woman, I'd feel very insecure and be afraid that you could leave me for somebody else who was better than me. And I'm getting older. We all get older. I would feel insecure. And my heart couldn't grow and I have to start protecting myself, knowing that you're not mine. You're not mine. 
See, everybody has a bad word on attachment. No, that's what sex is. It's total attachment. I'm yours, you're mine, and we're one. That's a beautiful thing. That's complete attachment and freedom at the same time because I'm not trying to change you. So she said, so beautifully, I don't want to change you. I don't want to control you. I can just tell you what I feel inside. And if you were to do that, so many men do those things. My father did those things. My father did those things. But all I can say to you is I would start feeling more insecure and I wouldn't be able to grow in my ability to love you and be happy. So that would be your gift to me. I said, honey, you got it.